Hi there everyone, I hope I find you well. Welcome back to the channel here with me, Jennifer Kirk. We're upstairs in the loft on Weir Yard and today I want to take a good close look at the whole new range of the Rails Connect point motors. Now this is a range that uh, Rails have launched, it's made for them by DCC Concepts and I should declare that I do actually work for DCC Concepts so I'm not going to be doing a standard review but I'm simply going to show you these products and show you their ins and outs. And if you really like the look of these then don't forget that we have a link in the description box down below that takes you direct to the appropriate page at Rails of Sheffield. So without further ado let's take a good close look at these all new products and see how they can work for you. These are a whole new range of solenoid point motors and associated accessories that have been produced for Rails of Sheffield by DCC Concepts. Solenoid point motors have been in use for decades, really really reliable, quite simple and I think a lot of people are very familiar with how to wire them up. So what do the Rails of Sheffield point motors bring to the party that isn't already there? Well, I'm going to start with the under baseboard point motor. Now, this just attaches to the side of the point. Now, what it actually has is it has five mounting points instead of the more normal four. And these are elongated. We've got screws that come in the packet with them. And that allows for a greater deal of flexibility and fine adjustment when you're setting these up to work with the point. Now you may need to actually trim the pin on a point uh, such as a Hornby point, but these will natively work with the standard Pico track points. They've also got a really good low profile just to keep them unobtrusive and to stop rolling stock from running the risk of uh, hitting these and fouling them. They've got an all metal case, really, really durable. And then we've got the power tail here of the three wires, red, green, black, so left, common return, right. And this is actually quite a heavy gauge of wire, comes pre-tinned. The throw bar just hooks over the tie bar of the point. And then before you fasten it down, just make sure that the point and the point motor flick freely, that there's no binding and no resistance. They are available in single packs and then a five pack. And then you can also get them singly with the accessory decoder if you're wanting to go down the DCC route. Um, and then there's also a value multi-pack as well with the accessory decoder. And that accessory decoder can also be used on DC. And there are certain circumstances where that would be the case, which I am going to go into. But before that, I want to look at the underboard solenoid. If we turn it this way up, we've got the pretty standard looking tabs, and these are designed to fit directly straight into the industry standard points that are available on the market. And then you can secure this just by bending them over or twisting them, and that is pretty much the way that you're well and truly used to. But the actual metal that these are made of, this is stainless steel. This will not rust. The solenoid itself is designed to be lower power, so it doesn't need as much oomph to be able to change the solenoid. And the actual action on these is designed to be as friction free as possible. And that should all go together to make these really, really reliable. The main feature on these really though for me is the pre-wired wiring loom. So you can see we've got the three wires just as we had with the on top of baseboard motor. But I really like this zip tie. It's a simple thing, but it stops those solder joints from getting potentially strained and giving you dry solder joints and their unreliability. So it's a really great feature. And it means that you can then solder free, use something like a chop block to do your wiring if you don't want to solder, or you can solder to these as well. If we're going to mount this under the baseboard, they come with these flanges attached already in place. We've got the uh, open four, which is really great for you can loosely attach it, 
got some adjustment, get it in just the right place to make sure that it switches first time every time. And then we can use these four to make sure that it's solidly in place. But it does mean you don't need to get a separate mounting point for these. And it also means that, that it's not going to work loose over time. If you're using these flanges to attach it, sometimes these can end up working out and uh, just generally causing a nuisance for point motors. So that really does stop that. Now you may be wondering about the pin there, it comes in one length. There's no extended pin versions of these. Instead, every point motor comes with that pin extender kit. And it's really just a pin with a collar. And you can just clamp that collar on using uh, something like a pair of pliers. If you really want it to be more secure, then you can solder it. There's nothing stopping you doing that. But I know that sometimes uh, people get frightened of soldering. So it's designed to work perfectly without needing that. Now I am going to um, give these a trial run with mounting. But what I actually want to talk to for me, the real party piece of this whole ensemble is the accessory decoder. Now I've got the paper cards that uh, come with each of the single packs, which gives you the fully inclusive wiring diagram. And you can see from these that actually what we've got on here, it's essentially it's a CDU designed to be local to the point motor. So you don't need long wiring runs. You don't have any of that induction problem that you can get with long wiring runs to solenoids. Um, and we've also got, you can see here, it covers your frog polarity change. It's all on board with this. We've also got uh, LED outputs, which you can use on say a, a control panel if you want to be able to see at a glance the actual position that your point is in, which is really great, say hidden fiddle yard sidings. And then we've also got a momentary switch input. Now you may be asking, DCC decoder, why does it need a switch? Well, you can feed this from the DCC power bus and it will get its standard commands through that way. And you can use it like any other standard accessory decoder. But this momentary switch works whether you're running it on DCC or on DC. So we put a regulated uh, 15 to 18 volts into the power input on DC and this acts like a small local CDU to trigger your points off a momentary contact switch but we've still got the LEDs which you can also wire in something like a colour light signal. We've also still got the frog polarity change and it will still change the point. Now on DCC, you can also use these as an additional way of switching your point. So you can send a command through the accessory bus and they'll change in the normal way. But let's say, for example, you've got a detector section and you want the point to change. Say if a train comes into a certain section, a certain point has to be set in a certain way, then you can actually use these as an additional way of doing that on DCC. And it's really, really flexible when you do that. These accessory decoders are designed so that you can change two points without any great difficulty. But because of the low friction in these and the low power consumption, it may actually be possible with careful fiddling to change more than two at the same time. But that's entirely up to your particular situations. On the accessory board, we've got some mounting screw holes, but I also really, really like that they've got a sticky pad underneath. This paper just peels off and you just stick them to the underside of your baseboard. So what I've got here is a little jig that I've made up. It's just a scrap piece of wood and I fastened to it a spare Pico point. And what I'm going to be demonstrating here is the Rails Connect surface mounted point motor attached to the point. And if you were doing an analog installation, you'd simply wire it up a conventional way for solenoids with these wires going back to your CDU, to your switches, and it'll work just fine like that. But I've used the accessory decoder that comes with this that we talked about in the intro. We wire in the solenoid. We've also got those outputs for LEDs if you want a panel indication or if you want to add color light signals. But what I've actually done is I've just wired in the passing contact switch here. 
and uh, I've got that just powered. I've piggybacked it off the DCC feed on this main layout. So at the moment, the DCC decoder is taking its power feed from the DCC bus, but you can also put in between 15 and 18 volts uh, stabilized DC power supply to power this. And you don't need the DCC system, but what it does give you is that local capacitor discharge unit and the other switching that's in here as well for things like the LEDs. So if I flick this switch now, you can see we've got a really great strong positive throw on the point motor. And on DC, we could just leave it like that, but we can also send the command on DCC. At the moment, this uh, accessory decoder is set to uh, number one. That's the default out of the packet. So this little switch here, I'm gonna just slide that over and it's got written on there, set and run. So it's now set to set. And what I'm gonna do is I've got an alpha central here and I'm going to put this on number 11. So I just press that, 11 flashes up. That's been sent through the uh, actual track bus, through the accessory bus. Nothing will happen, the point doesn't change, and that's perfectly fine, that's how it's supposed to be. Back on the board, we'll just set that back to run. And then what we find is that when we press that button number 11, the point will change. Press number 11, but we can still change that point through the switch, even though this is set to DCC decoder address number 11, which if I activate that, it switches and I can switch it here. And that's brilliant if we've got, for example, a detector section and we want the point to change when a train reaches a certain location on the layout. You can feed that input into the switch input and that'll change your point, but you've still got the DCC control on your layout to change it as well. And really you're just limited by your imagination as to what you can do with that. I'm gonna look now at how we fit the underboard point motor. And again, really, really easy. But first of all, I'm gonna share with you a little tip that I've learned over the years to get the hole in the right place so that the pin from the point motor goes up and switches the point without jamming on the edges. Get it in the right place first time, every time. Get yourself something like a sharpened pencil or a track pin. And with the point in the place where you want it, just place that pin or the pencil through the hole in the tie bar that the pin from the point motor will eventually go in. Make sure it makes contact with your baseboard and then just flick the point from side to side. That will leave a mark then on your baseboard and you can use that as your guide to drill through. As long as you completely obliterate that mark, then that hole will have enough clearance for that pin to be able to accurately switch the point. It also helps you when you go underneath because what it actually means is you look for the hole and you know that is where you are mounting your point motor. The rails point motors don't come in regular or extended pin form that you probably used to with other brands of solenoids. Instead what we've actually got is we've got a little brass collar here and we're going to just add this to the point motor. It just slips over the top of that and then with a pair of pliers or uh, another such tool, just very, very carefully just crimp it into place. Once you've got that collar onto the main pin, it's just simply a case we're going to put that pin in. And again, we're just going to crimp that into place, just very carefully, and give it a squeeze. And then we've got our extended pin in place and nice and firm. And if you really want to, you can solder that as well just to make sure. Uh, but in normal use, that's going to be just fine. On our jig board, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn this over. And I can see right through there and I can see the hole for the tie bar. So I'm just going to carefully line this up and drop this through and into place. And what you can see there is that the P 
pin is all the way through the tie bar. Now if we just line that up and then we just make sure that the point can be easily changed using the uh, solenoid, and I'm happy there. So I'm just matching that up, I drilled a few pilot holes, I'm just going to get the screw in there. Actually one of the really good things about this is if you use these spade style screw holes you can actually move the point motor out of the way and one of the things you could do is before you even line up the point motor get one of these screws just in place so that you can hold that underneath and if you're upside down underneath a baseboard it's a really great way of just stopping your point motor from falling when you're trying to work on it. And let's get another screw in here. Just take up the slack. And we can back these off a little bit, just so we've got a little bit of movement on the point motor. Works absolutely fine at that. Once we're happy with that installation, we can tighten these right up and use the handy wiring loom here to wire it in. And whether you're using plain old DC or going through that accessory decoder for DCC, as well as extra control on DC, it's entirely up to you. The final product that I've got here from the Rails Connect range is the point wiring loom. Now this is pretty much the same as uh, another product that's been on the market for a long long time and actually does make wiring up your points a lot easier because you don't have to do soldering just plug on with spade connectors but the version that rails have brought out in their rails connect range you actually get three in a packet they're around 50 percent longer and it's a much heavier gauge wire and this is all for the same price as the comparable product that's already been on the market as you can see, that's the same gauge of wire, same color code as well as what's coming on the point motors. These are actually aimed at those who have uh, solenoid point motors from other manufacturers that don't come pre-wired with a wiring loom, and these are just a push fit using the spade connectors. But with having the extra one in the pack plus around about 50% extra length, all for the same price, they really are good value for money, in my opinion. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, quick overview of some of the new Rails Connect products that are coming through. And I know from having a look online, a few people have um, run into a few issues when they're doing their installation. So I thought it was really useful to just be able to show you this very quick rough and ready installation showing just how durable these are. And what I really, really like is actually, even if you're running on DC, I'd actually recommend the accessory decoder because that gives you the frog switching. It also gives you panel lights, which in all honesty, I don't use panel lights, but what I do use is color light signals, which you can then interlock with the points, really, really cuts down on wiring. And it gives you a really reliably changing color light signal with really all you're doing is you're plugging the three wires plus a resistor to stop the uh, LEDs from being over voltaged back into this unit and because these units come on a one-for-one -one basis with the point motors when you buy them it means you can sit these locally to the point which would also be locally to the signal and it's a really really easy way of keeping on top of your layout wiring if you're on DC it just means that you can control them in this way and that's absolutely fine but on DCC you can use that to trigger the point if you've got something like a track detection circuit and coupled with being able to run a color light signal off this, it makes it a really great durable product. Well, I hope you found that video really informative and we've got a link in the description box down below to help you find all of these products. And uh, don't forget to tickle that like button, share this video too, and also subscribe to the channel and you'll be the first to know about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying, you take great care of yourself. Happy modelling. Bye for now. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon. And an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, 
Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky 10707, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMR ish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, and NI Railways 4000 class. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.